next panelist, we've got Shayma Kaya. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Shayma. I'm currently in my first year of studying Masters in Civil Engineering. So I'm basically my full fast forwarded one year. I actually graduated from my um, undergrad degree of Engineering Science in Italian last year. And after years of studying Italian, I actually had the opportunity to do a bit of, do a bit of traveling um, while at uni. So went on a Europe trip with my sister, visited Milan, so that's me in Milan on the right bottom one. And that's me with my sister in Florence, in front of the Ponte Vecchio. And we also went to Spain, which actually inspired me to learn a bit of Spanish. So I did a semester where I took a Spanish unit, and that's actually been amazing. Italians helped me learn Spanish. And I'll come to that at a bit of time. But like Michael said, I loved combining my engineering degree with my Italian because it's made me a more well rounded person. So that's me. So, Shayma, tell us about why you chose to continue with Italian beyond year 10 and then into university. Were there any challenges? To be completely honest, I, and I can say this honestly because my school isn't here, but I didn't really enjoy Italian up until probably about year 10. And um, I think I just wasn't exposed to the culture. It was just language, it was just grammar, it was rules. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. But when I got to year 10, I made the decision to continue in upper school. And that was a purely strategic decision because of the 10% low bonus that we've discussed today. And I think that decision that I made at age 15 was probably the best decision I could have made for my academic and personal development. So, got to upper school, I started to learn a lot more about the culture, and I felt that I could relate to it because I had a lot of, I'm of Turkish heritage, and I have a lot of overlap with the Italian culture. So, I started to become very passionate about it, and I decided I'm going to continue this on. Went to year 11, 12, really thoroughly enjoyed it, and when I finished year 12, it was actually my top subject, and I was so attached to it, basically, that I knew I couldn't just leave it in high school. I knew I wanted to continue Italian. I wasn't completely sure what else I wanted to pursue with my life, but I thought, I'll try engineering, and I'm definitely going to continue Italian, so decided to do those two together. In terms of any challenges, I don't think I've faced many. I, had, I was very fortunate. I have a very supporting family who 100% supported my decision and they wanted me to pursue my passion. Um, and in terms of learning the language, I think I sort of had an upper hand because also like John has brought up, it's actually a lot easier to learn a language, having another language up your sleeve. So I had a lot of benefits and a lot of advantages having known Turkish, speaking Turkish and learning Italian than other monolingual, one speaking, one language speaking people in my class. I had an upper hand over them. And I also felt like this was applicable when I was learning Spanish. So I had Italian up my sleeve and I thought, I'll give Spanish a go. And they're actually very similar languages. And you'll see with a lot of European languages, a lot of overlapping, a lot of the rules can be applied to each other. So I had a lot of ease learning Spanish with having known Italian and Turkish as well. So I didn't really face a lot of challenges. Thank you, Shayna. You have completed your Italian studies and have started your Masters in Professional Engineering. How do you hope your studies of Italian and Engineering will provide you with opportunities in the future? In my opinion, by learning a language, you don't just gain proficiency in that language. You also acquire a lot of soft skills along the way. So these skills include communication, teamwork, you've got more here adaptability or flexibility, um, confidence and problem solving. And a lot of these skills are actually what employers are looking out for. So if you ask me, am I going to use en uh, my Italian in engineering? Am I going to be become an engineer who can work in Italy? Although I'd love that, I, from a realistic point of view, I probably don't see myself doing that. But I can look back at my studies in Italian and I can see that I've grown so much as a person and I've developed myself so much and picked up a lot of skills along the way that will um, benefit me in the future if that makes sense. So engineering is a very social industry and it's purely based on networking, how well you communicate well, how well you communicate with people, how you build relationships with people because when you think of it, 
as an engineer, you're not going to build a bridge by yourself. You need to work with other people. You need to communicate your message across so that you can build the bridge together. Um, and I think Italians definitely helped me step out of my comfort zone, step out of my shell, and yeah, like we've been talking about here, like Stefan has said, open your mind, become more open-minded, become more creative in the way that you think, creative in the way that you express yourself. Because you have to. Like, if you're in an environment where you don't know the language, and you have to get a message across, you think of different ways to do it. So if you have a monolingual person, and you have a person who is bilingual or multilingual, you'll find that mono, you'll find that the bilingual or monolingual Apologies, guys. You'll find that the bilingual person will express themselves in more creative and different ways because they need to get the message across. So, I feel like Italian has helped me differentiate myself from my peers in a lot of environments. And if we're talking about it just from an academic point of view or just from a career-driven point of view, when you get a resume, you just see a resume and it's just the same things. And I've had employers tell me it's just the same things written on paper you know, we know that you can get a degree, but it's showing how you're different from others. So having a language up your sleeve is a great conversation starter. It helps you differentiate yourself from other people in the room because you're competing against so many people. It's a very competitive industry, as you've heard about today, just from the ATAR tool. So it really helps you just set yourself over the edge, and it's a great conversation starter as well, I find. So. Thank you. How was studying Italian at UWA different from school? So here yeah, we have very awesome professors, as you've already met him, John Kinder, amazing. We have my Brunetta, who is also amazing. Um, putting that aside, I think I really enjoyed the course structure at UWA. So having language units and having culture units, and this is a party trick, I pull it out all the time. So in our first, was it first or second year? Second year. John Kinder told us we're going to read this book, and he's, I think it's about 130 pages, full Italian. It's a pretty big text though. And he said, we're going to read this book, and every week, one person's gonna present the chapter. Now, we'd already, all of us had been studying Italian for about five to six years, and we looked at him and we said, there's no way that's gonna happen. Like, we're gonna slip up, we're gonna talk in English, and he said, no, no, the whole discussion will be in Italian. So by the end of our third year, we um, obviously got through second year, got through third year as well. And as a class, we read this book. It's, I borrowed it from the library. I have my copy at home. Um, we had to read this book, and it's about double the pages, double the complexity, double the themes. And he really helped us to step out of our comfort zones and to build a lot of confidence in doing that as well. What I really enjoyed from the culture classes, as you would have already gauged from me, culture is a big part of who I am. So anything with culture, I stream to. Um, with the culture classes, we learned about Italian history, art, food, sports, anything big in Italy. So I literally had a unit for a semester where we were watching Italian movies. And every week we'd watch a different movie and go to class and analyze it and discuss it. And I'd have my engineering friends who'd be like, oh, I have a group assignment, I need to do this, because they took like a finance class or something. They'd be like, oh, I have to work on this, this assignment. And I was just like, yeah, like, I just have to watch this movie. And then, you know, I'm just going to walk up to class and hope it all goes well. We've had, um, <coughs> sorry, let me just move back to this. Oh, I had a unit on Italian migration, which was very, very interesting, because that sort of helped tie it all together to really understand how Italians impacted Australia, and you, you, you don't pick up on it until you study it, but small things that you recognise at restaurants, or at the supermarket when you see a brand and you can recognise that's Italian, or from people's last names when you can pick up that they are Italian. It's certain kind of things that I've gained that I could really relate to Australian context and say, hey, this isn't just a European language that I learnt that's far away from me, that's all the way in Europe. No, it's actually very much present in Australia. And this is something that, again, I like to point out all the time, is look around this room. We're all very, very different. And understanding and learning about different cultures makes you more appreciative and understanding and tolerant of other cultures as well. And let me tell you, we need a lot of tolerant people in this country. It's a very multicultural country. 
and we all need to have an understanding of each other's cultures to live together diversely.